Hi guys, this is Amar and welcome to Amar Tech Stuff. So guys, in this video, we are going to focus on top 10 HSRP that is hot standby router protocol interview question and answers. So this is our question number one. What is the use of HSRP? Guys, HSRP is used to provide default gateway redundancy. Now, whenever we talk about our campus network, we'll have uh, dual external links, we'll have dual routers, We'll have dual switches everything will be dual simply because to achieve network redundancy now this is very important because a good design should have network redundancy now from the point of view of this end user for example he is using a pc now this pc can have only one default gateway Either it can have router R1 as a default gateway or router R2 as a default gateway. Let's say it is having default gateway as router R2 and if R2 router fails, then what the network administrator have to do is have to go and configure router R1 as a default gateway for this PC. This is problematic because we are ending up with some downtime. So to solve this problem, HSRP helps us. What the network administrator can do is that you can make this routers R1 and R2 a member of an HSRP group. And once he makes the member of an HSRP groups to this routers, one router will be elected as an active router. Let's say router R2 becomes an active router in the HSRP. And uh, the there will be the backup active router which is known as standby router in HSRP. So this will be the standby router, it's the backup of the active router. And at the same time we have to configure something known as uh, virtual IP for the HSRP. Now let's say, now these are the LAN interfaces, correct? Now for example like this have 10.1.1.1 as the IP address and this have 10.1.1.2 as the IP address. So choose a 10.1.1.3 as the IP address. Now, on this PC, rather than configuring 10.1.1.2 or 10.1.1.1 as a default gateway, we will configure this 10.1.1.3 as the virtual IP. This will be the IP of the virtual router which is sitting between these two routers. Now, whenever this PC have to reach the default gateway, it will reach to 10.1.1.3 means it is going to reach this router because this is the active router, router R2 and in case R2 fails or goes down or this link goes down, the traffic will be forwarded towards R1 because then the R1 will become the active router. So there is no need to change the default gateway for this PC. The default gateway will be always this VIP that is virtual IP address. So this is how HSRP helps and provide us with default gateway redundancy. Now this is a very important question. How is the election of the active router done in HSRP? Now active router guys, you understood that active router is the one which actually forwards a user's traffic. So this is this was here in this case, we choose that router R2 was our active router. But how is this election done? Uh, HSRP router with the higher priority will be elected as the active router. Now, for HSRP the default priority is 100. So, this is 100 and for this router also 100. Okay. Now, if in case this default priority is same, we have kept it same, that is default or we have kept it same, then the election will go on to this HSRP interface IP address. So this is our HSRP interface IP address. Now here router 2 is having HSRP interface IP address at 10.1.1.2 and router 1 is having the HSRP uh, interface IP address at 10.1.1.1. Now 10.1.1.2 is higher, so router 2 will be active. Okay. So this is how the election in the HSRP is done. Now for example, if I change the uh, HSRP priority of router R1 from 100 to let's say 120, then router R1 will become active and router R2 will become standby. 
So this is what the points I've mentioned. First, it will look at the priority. If the priority matches or it is same or it is kept default, then the election will depend upon the HSRP interface IP address. The one with the higher IP will be elected as the active router. Guys, always remember this thing that in HSRP higher is better. Now let's move on to the next question. That is question number three. What is the HSRP virtual MAC address? Like uh, we, we just discussed that we'll have something known as virtual IP address. Similarly, HSRP will have for this IP address a virtual MAC address and which will be in this format 0000.0c07.ac followed by the HSRP group. Now, if the HSRP group is 10, then it will be AC10. And if the HSRP group is 100, then it will be AC64. It is 64 because this HSRP group is in the uh, hexadecimal format. So if you convert uh, the decimal 100 to hexadecimal, uh, then the output will be 64. So always guys do remember. So whenever you answer this question guys, always remember this point that in HSRP virtual MAC address, you will have HSRP group number in hexadecimal format. This is very important thing to remember. Let's move on to the next question. What HSRP uses TCP or UDP? The answer is UDP. Yes guys, HSRP uses UDP. This is a tricky question. So always remember that HSRP uses UDP and not TCP. If you can remember, you can remember this port number that HSRP uses UDP port number 1985. If you could remember, it will be great. What are the HSRP default hello and hold on timers? Like every protocol have its hello and hold on timer. HSRP also have the hello and hold on timer. Now, like router R1, we, we saw router R1 and R2. Now, this routers, this HSRP routers will exchange hellos between them. Now, they'll exchange hellos every 3 seconds and the hold on timer is 10 seconds. So, 3 and 10. These are the timers for HSRP. Default timers. Again, guys, you can change this default timers. Let's move on to the very important question. What are the different states present in HSRP? So, the states which are present in HSRP are initial learn listen speak standby and active i remember it like i double l double s a so you know the very first state is initial state so this is a very initial state or the starting state as its name suggests so whenever you make an any interface as a interface up it will be in any initial state the next state is the learn state. The learn state is where the router is actually waiting to hear the hellos from the active router. And it is also trying to learn the virtual IP address. So learn is, it is trying to learn the virtual IP address. And in listen state, it actually learns the virtual IP address. But it is not elected as any active or standby. Some other routers may be elected as active or standby. This router is not elected as active or standby. Then, then it will be in the listen state. Speak state here. Uh, this is a very important state because here this is a state where the router is going to send hellos. Okay. In this state, initial, loan and listen hellos are not sent. In this state, speak state, the hellos are sent and the router participate to become the active router. If the router is in the standby state, that means it is not become active. It is the backup of the active router. It has become the standby router. But it's still again here also it is going to send the hellos, exchange the hellos with the active router. So the active router will be the one which are actually become the active router and it's forwarding the traffic of the user and using the virtual IP address. As we saw in the in the in the, in the diagram that you know R2 was the active router and was using the virtual IP 10.1.1.3. So here the active router will also again send the hellos and exchange the hellos. Uh, bit with the standby router. So guys always remember this point which I have mentioned here that hellos are sent out in speak, standby and active state. As I told hellos are not sent out in this three states initial learn and listen but hellos are sent in speak, standby and active state. This is a very important point a key point to 
remember or whenever you study uh, this stage in HSRP. So this is a key point. So always remember there are six states. As I remember, I double L double S A initial loan listen speak stand by and active. Let's move on to the next question. Question number seven. What are the maximum numbers of routers can be present in an HSRP group? In an HSRP group, we can have up to 16 routers. Okay, so as we saw in the in our diagram, we were having only two routers. So such 16 routers we can have in a single HSRP group. Question number eight: What is the difference between HSRP version one and version two? So guys, there are two versions in HSRP one and two. HSRP in HSRP version one, uh, we use multicast address hsrp uses the multicast address to send hellos as 224.0.0.2 so this is very important to remember that 224.0.0.2 is the multicast address used in hsrp version 1 whereas in hsrp version 2 it is 224.0.0.102 the next difference in hsrp version 1 it will support 256 groups ranging from 0 to 255. So you can give whenever you are using HSRP version 1, you can give your group uh, number anything between 0 to 255. And whenever you are using version 2, you have the freedom of using the HSRP group number from this range that is 0 to 4095 because HSRP version 2 supports 4096 groups. HSRP 2 allows IPv6. So if you are dealing with IPv6 traffic, then you have to go for HSRP version 2 because HSRP version 1 do not support IPv6. Let's move on to the question number 9. What will, what will you troubleshoot if both the routers in HSRP are showing HSRP status as active? This is a very commonly asked question. A troubleshooting point of a question just to uh, check your understanding on HSRP. Now, in this diagram, like, you know, this is router R1 and router R2. Now, both these routers are showing as active router, let's say. Ideally, one of the routers should show as active and the other router should show as standby. But in case both the routers are showing active router means there is a problem. What will be the problem? The problem will be that this HSRP interfaces, this interfaces are not communicating with each other. Ideally, once they are communicating with each other, hellos will be sent between them. Right? Now, if the hellos are not sent between them, then both of them will declare as them as active router. So to troubleshoot it, you need to check the status of this HSRP interfaces, this links which are coming in between them. You, you should be able to ping like this is 10.1.1.2 and this is let's say 10.1.1.1. Then you should have, you should from this router R1, okay, keeping this interface as source, you should be able to ping 10.1.1.2. Okay, so this is the thing which need to be uh, this is the approach what, what we can say while troubleshooting this kind of issue where both the routers are showing as active router. Let's move on to the next question that is question number 10. What will happen if preemption is not enabled in HSRP? Guys, always do remember that by default preemption is not enabled in HSRP. We have to manually enable preemption and if it is not enabled, then the router which actually may which actually should be the active router won't be able to claim its status as the active router uh, i can explain you with uh, this help of this diagram also okay so if this is router r1 and router r2 let's say this router r1 have the priority as 120 and router 2 have the default priority hsrp priority as 100 now Ideally, router R1 should become active router because it is having the higher priority. But what has happened that router R2 has become active because it booted first. So it it is it is active and after some time router R1 booted or came up. So it has become standby. Now, since it has become standby and this router has become active, 
it will remain in the same state. It won't change if preemption is not enabled. And by default, as I told in HSRP, preemption is not enabled. If you enable the preemption by using this command, standby one, this one is the uh, HSRP group number, preempt. So if you enable this preemption, then this router one, once it comes up, this router one will not remain in the standby. It will not go into standby. It will become active and router two will become standby. So these are the 10 questions and answers which guys I want to highlight or want to show you in this particular video. Uh, I hope that this video will be an informational video for you all people who are appearing for interviews and uh, I will come up with more videos such videos uh, and if you really like these videos I will request you all to please share this video with your friends with your colleagues and also subscribe to my channel Amar Tech Stuff so I'll end up in this video here and catch up in the next video till then bye thanks and best of luck